United States supports the Saudi Arabia's efforts to create a worldwide Islamic bloc as an antidote to Arab nationalism. See, that's important. You want to downplay this Arab nationalism. Remember how I said they have to undermine national sovereignty. Uh, that's what the Arnold Toynbee, who was a member of uh, Cecil Rhodes Secret Society, said. We have to undermine national sovereignty. So there's all these plots. You have these revolutions, you know, crises and all, to undermine uh, the, the national pride or power of these, uh, these uh, governments. So you cause the people to rally, you know, and uh, rally against them, whatever they're doing, you create a crisis, and then you, you step in. You're the power lead through its agents, British or American, step in and say, okay, we'll help you. You know, we'll, we'll get you some help uh, against this, the horrible people who are doing this to you. And so uh, what, uh, what would happen is uh, the United States support for the Saudis' efforts to create a worldwide Islamic bloc that, that would be this antidote to Arab nationalism and uh, the long-standing ties between Islamic fundamentalists and the leading banks of the West. So you have a money interest here, too. See. Continuing the quote, that with clarity and rigor, Dreyfus, that's the author, also chronicles how the United States looked the other way when Israel's Secret Service supported the creation of the radical Palestinian group Hamas. Now, people today don't understand that. They don't say, well, they did what? That's right. There was support. The Dreyfus Chronicles how the U.S. looked the other way when Israel's Secret Service supported the creation of the radical Palestinian group Hamas. See, Israeli Secret Service supports the creation of Hamas. I mean, think about that. Uh, the, he continues this quote, Devil's Game, that's the title of the book, reveals a history of double dealing and cynical exploitation that continues to this day, as in Iraq, where the United States is backing uh, radical Islamists allied with Iran's clerics who have surfaced as the uh, dominant force of the post saddam Hussein Iraqi government. And because basically place. down there in Gaza today, well, what's the major force? There was Hamas that's attacking right. Israel all the time. Uh, basically, it's all a put on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you finance the people who are attacking you, and that way you have an enemy. You rally the people behind the government and oppress the people to protect them from that wicked Hamas that you're financing. Go right ahead, Dr. Cuddy. Uh, yeah, and I remember last week I said how uh, when we assisted the overthrow of Gaddafi in Libya, a lot of the weapons came across Egypt with the support of the Muslim Brotherhood, especially the anti-tank weapons, went to Hamas to uh, back them up when they launched the rockets against Israel, and Israel was going to push back. Hold the thought, hold the thought. Nothing as it appears to be, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is illusion and delusion. Kenny, you go ahead. We've got about three minutes for to wrap up the program. Okay, well, I'll just uh, do one more important quote here, uh, because there was, well, we not only, the U.S. doesn't all only create divisions between major groups, like between Catholics and Protestants or Sunnis and, and Shia and so forth. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, differences between nations, so uh, Nasser in Egypt was becoming stronger, and uh, the Saudis, <clears throat> Saudis didn't really like that. So the Saudis uh, were opposed to Nasser and became uh, the primary supporters <clears throat> pardon me, of the Muslim Brotherhood on the, the Arabian P Peninsula and beyond. And according to an author uh, named Martin Lee in a magazine called Razor, R-A-Z-O-R, magazine in 2004, the Muslim Brotherhood members were, quote, employed as teachers and imams, I-M-A-M-S, imams in Saudi mosques, schools and government agencies, where they promoted the extremist doctrine of Syed Qut, Q U T B, the Brotherhood's leading scribe and theorist, who provided a Quranic justification for violence. You gotta have a justification for violence. Against corrupting Western influences. One of Osama bin Laden's uh, instructors in religious studies was the ex exiled brother of Syed Qut, who taught classes on the imperatives and nuances of Islamic jihad. Muslim Brotherhood veterans have played a prominent role during every phase of bin Laden's terrorist odyssey. As a college student, he was mentored by Abdullah Azam, a Palestinian Muslim brother. Bin Laden transferred his base of operations to the Sudan in 1991, 
And for the next five years, Bin Laden and Zinner Circle were holed up in Khartoum, uh, courtesy of Sheikh Hassan al-Tarabi, the Sorbonne at the France Paris, educated head of the Muslim Brotherhood Sudanese branch. Bin Laden went back to Afghanistan in 1996. Al-Qaeda member Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, <clears throat> self-described mastermind of the 9-11 operation, cut his teeth on the Kuwaiti chapter, <clears throat> pardon me, of the Muslim Brotherhood, end quote. So there you have all of these connections and how the Brotherhood fits in uh, with all of these things that have happened, and we've been supporting. We've been supporting them and using them for our <clears throat> various activities, as Robert Baer said, for many, many years, doing our dirty work for us in that region. And the average individual in America has very little, if any, idea what's really going on. I guess it's been Dr. Dennis Cuddy. Dennis, we're certainly going to look forward to having you with us again next week at the same time uh, to continue this uh, exciting ex exposure of the, of the best ending of the way. Goodbye. Bye-bye. God bless. Thanks, man. Bye.